All right, we are here. Elaine Hi. is back in the booth for the first Hi. time in ages. Uh, yeah, you could say that. Next time, if I ever come back, I want to be in the booth. I don't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm so freaking, like, I'm so tired and I've only played two matches. Yeah, after being 2-0 and being undefeated in a tournament, I often feel like I never want to play again. That's usually the feeling. No, no, but the thing is, right, so the last time I played competitive Magic was at MagicCon Chicago, which right. is like, what, like three months ago. Mm -hmm. I started, like, like I, I had a good record. I was just so tired and yeah. I'm like how do you people play seven <laughs> rounds of magic in a day like I'm too old for this I 100% agree this is why <laughs> people judge instead it's a lot easier oh, I, I don't even know about that one I don't know uh but how do you feel about your deck um it's okay so here's the thing right I tend I know I, I have a tendency to catastrophize or Correct. Cat yeah. catas like whatever where I look at everybody else's deck and I look at the best case scenario like the like Black Lotus deck, I'm like, oh, they're just gonna always have Black Lotus. Correct. Yeah, they're gonna, like they're gonna like always have Ancestral Recall. Mm -hmm. um, if I look at my own deck, I'm just like, well, what if like my deck just doesn't function? What if I just like Mulliganify? Yep. Um, I just draw treachery and two lands every time. Well, I feel like so like, and also the thing is, given how the format works, like sometimes you just like, like people like assume that I'm just going to win. Yes. And I have to like like kind of because there's so much randomness here right like sometimes you just like don't get there like my um that one one uh vrd like vrd4 when i had the broken deck mm -hmm. i only went five and two there like i wanted like i won with a five and two correct this is where you had the draft matters cards yeah but that yeah. but 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 that deck was like busted correct. but like sometimes you just sometimes you just lose magic is a 70 percent game right the, the best possible so, matchups have 70 percent chance of winning so yeah like and you know if you get 70 percent chance in seven matches that that doesn't that doesn't win you a vrd yeah. Right. Well, so. this, this is where it's like a fun thing about Magic in general. It's just like you see grinders that are like, oh, yeah, they like made it to top eight in 12 PTQs. It's just like that means they played like 140 PTQs because it's the only way that could possibly happen no matter how good you are. It's mostly just about the sheer number of reps you put in. Yeah. Well, and obviously, you have to be I a mean, great player on top. And you have to be a great draft. If you're on top Mason and he's won like four of, of the last like six that he, like, there's been eight since I've been gone. How yes. many has he played in? Like five of them? Uh, he has played in four of them and i think he won three of them yes okay so he's won th three out of four okay so that's yeah i mean that's a better record than my two out of five but it's... that that two out of five also has two second places so you know. oh okay i see yeah one to john ryan who took a better version of your deck <laughs> i don't know about that i think i just like decided i didn't want to play a draft matters deck anymore and then winning was... does feel tiresome after a while i get it <laughs> I had second, it was fine. <laughs> you know, if, if I come back with, like, a 5-2, I, I I think I'll be happy. Whether or not 5-2 and two wins this... 5-2, and two, I mean, given how grindy the field looks, I think 5-2 and two is going to do great. Uh, like, I think 5-2 and two might win outright, in fact. But there was that 3-1 and one that's sitting there. And that's true. And there is a... Um, yeah, let's jump to the standings in a minute, yeah. actually. Because Dan is doing incredibly well. Uh, he's sitting at three and one. You're obviously undefeated at two zero. Kyle's two and one, uh, and but I mean, looking down, it's I mean, Adam is bafflingly at one and three with his super busted deck. That seems incredibly strong to me. Uh, he's had some bad matchups, I think. But... The deck also has like a lot of moving pieces. It's, it does. It, it's going to be really tough. But I mean, like he c c could bounce back, but it's like you have to draw your pieces in the right order and sometimes like some of the cards just yeah he has, he has a couple of one card combos though that make it pretty pretty nuts uh so yeah we'll see but yeah all right well looking at, looking at the field this way i certainly feel a lot better yeah i think you should <laughs> um but your deck what, what what cards do you do you feel like you missed out on or cards that you feel like you just sniped that nobody else could get? um i really wanted so the thing is i looked at the at the the past couple of VRDs and people just like hadn't taken time vault early and I was like Correct. that's super weird yep. so I'm like maybe I can float the time vault to like pick two and then I wasn't able to float the time vault that didn't happen no so I that sucks that um I, I am sad that I missed Prism Prismatic Vista and um also that I missed Veil of Summer yeah those yeah. two were ones that I was tracking pretty hard and 
Nice. Are you nervous about the mana base in your deck? Obviously, you have you have good mana, right? You've drafted a lot of good mana for it, but you are still running a four color mana base. I've drafted twelve dual lands. Correct. Actually, I've more drafted... than dual. Yeah. Yeah. More than the triumphs and such. Um. Something I've been doing in the last couple of years is every time I cube draft, I just always force a five color like nonsense pile and take all of the lands. Yeah. So I'm accustomed to like. This sort of land base looks very normal to me now. Like I'm okay. like I'm used to it. And also people like aren't one of the other punishers. things. Yeah. Like one of the other things Vance has a blood moon. Correct. <laughs> um, There's no price of progress running around. Uh, right? like, but like one of the the, the the things I noticed, um, looking at like what's been printed since the, the last time I VOD'd is that like there's just been so many lands. Yes. And I'm just like, based on that, I think you can just play like three or four colors pretty consistently but you have to like do it correctly like you only have 46 picks yep and like there definitely was a cost right like i would have liked four or five more sideboard cards like i like i feel like i'm missing a couple for the, these like two red white yes. initiative ish decks where i'm like don't feel good about those matchups um and i feel like i'm missing some stuff for mason which i don't know how that's gonna go but yeah, well, yeah. well, let's let's go find out because I think you're going to be hopping over there right now. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Elaine on the two zero to start. If you can send Steven in, please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And then we have Mason ready to go as well. So this is the uh, king and queen of VRD. Uh, Mason obviously has is the current holder of the winning trophy in VRD. He has three total un three cleared wins. Um, Elaine had the first two wins in a row uh, and uh, retired having won her draft. So we'll see. We'll see what actually ended up happening here. But this is a long-awaited uh, long uh, event happening here. So I'm excited to see how it goes. Uh, Steven's going to happen into the booth here, but I'm just getting the standings all worked out here for y'all. Uh, we have Mason currently on a one and one it looks like. One and one versus Elaine's two and zero, and we have Steven joining me in the booth. All right. So we were just checking out the standings while they get set up. Uh, things are looking pretty strong. Elaine was talking about how the the three matchups she is most nervous about uh -huh. are the two initiative decks. She wish she had more sideboard cards for those. Right. And also she feels like the Mason matchup is one that she wished she had another sideboard card. Yeah, for. the discard, you know. I mean, she's got the Orvar, which can help, but you know, yep. that can be a little painful. I was Yeah, Orvar isn't a card we see a lot. No, it's it's interesting. It's got a lot of interesting things. Um, you know, if you do kind of it can do a lot of crazy combo -y stuff, and it can also protect against discard. So, um, an opponent control the card, you discard the, the card, create tokens, a copy of the target permanent. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a smart card. I mean, I like it. Right, it's not one I would ever think about pulling in compared to like there's the Nullhide Ferox and the other cards that are like more on the nose of discarding into play. But this one's one you can actually cast, which is. I think this one's better in a control -y type shell, right? Because where the other one is. Um, the big fatty aggro -y thing. You know? Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's interesting for sure. But yeah, it looks like they're still shuffling up. Yeah. Elaine has her uh, has the loot tree sitting up there in the command zone right. ready to go. I actually saw her cast it already once today, which is unusual for, yeah. for people that draft loot tree. But I think everybody here actually knows how to how to play these decks. A lot of times you have players that aren't used to playing companions right. in every format, so they just forget that they have a loot tree. Ooh. Um, Steven. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I had it spelled correctly on one of them. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, Mason's one and one. Elaine is two and zero. Oh. Mm -hmm. They are shuffling up, and I think we're Elaine good to go. Decide Mason's close eyes and already go. Yep. yep. All good. Yeah, we got the Lutri, so we all we, we, <laughs> the Lutri gave away which said the Elaine was on. So. All right. We got Peter so, joining yeah. us. Elaine brought Narset back. Uh, kind of brought it right back in, brought it right back into the middle of the pack. Yeah. Uh, Narset is a card that's fallen pretty low. During the Chicago Champs matchup, we had it, I think, 37th got picked. Uh, is Narset back where it belongs, or is this somewhere that she's just taking a pet card? I think I think a little bit of both. I think it's somewhere between those two, right? I think that Narset, I think the fall of Narset, I mean, I think like anything, we talk about this with Marvel Snap, right? That sometimes the best deck is simply about fashion, right? Like mm -hmm. the best deck from last month was is probably still really good, but people are just bored of it, so they move on. 
Um, I think that Narset does a lot of time just kind of brick. Um, I think in a, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to get a card and it's going to die. Uh, but in this particular draft where everything's very mid rangey, mm -hmm. uh, this feels much more like back or like St. Lotus two or St. Lotus three where, where they were, you know, Narset was an all-star. So, um, and I think it highlights and then also just people's comfort with the card, right? Like, I mean, so if Elaine does win this, right, there's going to be two questions, right? Is this meaning that these kind of cards that many of these that she has that have kind of fallen out of fashion and this kind of control deck is still good? Mm -hmm. Or is it that Elaine's just an amazing player, right? Or some mixture thereof. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, VRD is definitely susceptible to fashion trends like anything else, uh, particularly in the Discord where we get... Um, yeah. uh, particularly in the Discord where, you know, it gets very incestuous after a little while. Totally. And, you know, and things like that. Um you know, you don't get necessarily those new attitudes, those new thoughts. So, uh, I, I think a little bit of both, right? I, I, I think Narset's still very solid. Um, but I think, for, you know, some of these matchups, like, Narset's going to be really bad in this match. And not, not this match. This match might be okay. But against, like, Dan, against Cody, Narset's probably going to be pretty bad. Uh, and that matchup, Narset was really amazing, right? Her one against Adam that was off camera right there, so... Yeah, I mean, I saw I saw Narset um, against Brandon also do a ton of work. Yeah, uh, and obviously like, Brandon's playing a more aggressive deck, but he it's not got, really aggressive. It's it's yeah. sure, but he, but he got like Dak Faden out. Yeah, just, like pretty disgusting. Yeah, Dak is one of the fall I think that's just still unjustified, right? I think Dak is an unjustified fall. It's always good, right? Like, Correct, right? But Dak Dak plus Narset was pretty good in that matchup. Yeah, where she made you made him draw one, discard two. Yeah, she did it to um, he uh, Adam had one in hand and yep, exactly he just like just wrecked him, right? And it's like if the match is slow enough that you can actually have a Narset stick out for two turns, it's incredible. Yeah. All right, so they're shuffling up. I don't know. I didn't see who caught the win. Mason has Reanimate, Snapcaster. There's a Mox in there that looks. A Preordain yeah. and a. Uh, him it's to got Turok. a him. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a turn one him to Turok. Yeah, that's a turn one him. He's got a fetch to go get whatever he wants. Not quite a turn two him again, but it's a turn three him again. Right. So we'll see if, so if he goes turn one him right. into turn three him. But who won the roll is the question here, right? Like, that's the... Yeah. Because, you know, she has Spell Pierce, obviously that changes. It does. It's still absolutely worth doing. Right, no, for sure. But, like, does she get wrecked or does she... And Mason won the roll. Oh, yep. Who has the spicy list? I don't know. Nobody really went completely nuts. Adam was my spicy of the day, I and mean, then he's not doing well right, with it, right? It's like I, Divert and Oko are the discards. Yeah, I, I picked Adam for my winner, and he's uh, he's dropped my ball so far, right? So. Yeah, he's he's had a... Uh, Elaine was talking about how his deck seems like it needs to have a lot of moving pieces work together. Right. I think that is true, but I also think he has some one-card combos that just cannot straight up win the game. So, yeah. I don't know. He was my favorite on the best deck. I think the spiciest deck is probably Dan's. Uh, just this red one initiative, but Dan's is pretty predictable. I mean, it's a, the deck's been and it's not spicy. It is what it is. Like it's taking a bunch of cards we've never seen before. It does have that. Anyway. He does have a lot of interesting cards, and and uh, the spice of Dan's is that it might be as we talked about earlier with Peter, the coming out party of yes. Broadside Bombardier, right? Yes. Where it's been drafted, but I don't think it's really shined. The people that I haven't drafted yet, but the people that have, they they've not been like, oh my god, in chat, they've not been like that card won me every game, you know. I We're, mentioned this with Mark, where if you want to consider Dan's deck spicy, I think it's spicy because it shows that there is a small window of opportunity to take a, a constructed deck and make it a VRD viable list. Yeah. Because Boros Initiative is a list, and Broadside Bombardier is just a proven card. And get this is probe. very much a marriage of those two. Okay, so Get Probe after preordaining with one on top, one on bottom, taking both of the cards. Uh, so now Get Probe reveals a Mana Drain, uh, uh, dig two through lands, time. Dig Through Time, and I don't know what that second card is. Yeah, I cannot tell what that second card is. Uh, oh. It's a Death Rite Shaman. Oh, yes, good call. Yeah. An eminently uncastable DRS? Yes, but there's going to be Mana Drain up next turn, or this turn right now. I assume that's better than anything else she could cast, even though it's going to be Mana Draining probably a Snapcaster. Right. Um, and oh, the the land is um. This is the fast land, the blue white fast land mm -hmm. in her hand. Interesting that she chose to play the volcanic over the fast land. I guess maybe the red is important for something. The card face down. I don't know what she doesn't have. Red's the least color. Why so do you I need don't... double red? Yeah, I don't right. know. I don't know. Or maybe I'm wrong, and this is actually a slow land, and I just don't understand how things work. It might be one of the slow ones. Which I think it's deserted something or other. Beach. 
Yeah, that's the you control comes into unless you control two other lanes. That's a slow. Oh, land. it's a slow land. Okay, right. That's so it is the right call. Yeah. It's like that didn't make any sense otherwise. Okay, so Mason's trying to decide whether he wants to go Snapcaster into him and just have it get manager rained, or do something else that would get manager rained. What else? Beyond the reanimate, he's flicking. These are both flickers. Like Elaine's flicking in there like, it's a, like crazy. It's, there's a reanimate, Gristlebrand, land, and okay. Snapcaster. Right. So now Elaine has to decide whether to manager in the Snapcaster or, or manager in the. the I mean, he might just do Gitaxian probe <laughs> to deny the mana. Right. Now she's in the snap. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so Elaine's going to be coming in with this turn with three or five mana, uh, which is enough to to cast Dig Through Time. It's a white card in her hand. I can't see what it is, though. Yeah, these are both pro flickers. Like, <laughs> Elaine's flicking in there. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. Actually, I like flicking a lot because it's helpful to see what the cards are, but she, they're a little too far back for me to see yeah. right now. I, I'm an anti-flicker. But, I love know. it. <laughs> All right, so she's, she is casting the Dig Through Time. Yeah. Pitching the whole graveyard, using all the mana drain mana, just finding seven. And the, she dig through time into another dig through time, namely Narset, right. if she wants it. I saw a Narset, a deck fade in. Yeah, I saw a Narset and deck. Nothing else that looked super exciting, but we'll see. You can come out and play some Lorcana with us sometime soon, Mark? We're ready to game. Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Cody finally won me over. He, he tried to get me over from set one, and I kept telling him, I don't need a new game, need a new game, and I, I finally got converted over, so. I'll play Star Wars. That game's pretty great, but the Lorcana has not bit me yet. Yeah, it's fun. Star Wars has a lot of depth to it. Yeah. I think Lorcana does, too. I think the challenge of Lorcana is that every, at most, half your deck can be mana or card, mm -hmm. so it's the, the choice of, do I ink this now and make it mana, or do I need it later? You know, and that's the real strategic depth. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the same thing from WoW TCG that's also true in Star Wars. the original versus system mechanic. Yeah. Yes. Everything was a resource if you wanted it to be. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And WoW TCG, I think, is the... I don't know if it was versus or WoW it came first, but yeah. Versus. That's, so okay. now we're going to snap. We're going to reanimate the snap. And now we're going to do the him. The, the original versus series. Got it. Because that, that, that collapsed like six or seven sets in and just power crept itself into oblivion. That makes sense. All right, so a second him to Turok. Yeah. But him to Turok after a deck, after a dig through time, not as good. All right, so it's that same white Land card that we didn't know what it looks was. looks like. Or white card arrow. That was a white card. I think it was a, maybe a path. It's definitely arrow on top. It's a sword, probably. It's, it's oh, a white sword, card. sorry, because it's, it's game one. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other was arrow. Get lost, which is very odd. Oh, maybe it, was, maybe it was get lost. It was either get lost or swords in arrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Uro being in the yard is obviously not ideal, but she's very far from casting it. Yeah, yeah, zero green the, the, the dig, the dig helped. Uh, yeah, the graveyard's gone, and there's only one green source. Okay, now. looks like hey, I think think cube is better. Cube is not better, but you know you're okay, and we still love you. <laughs> yeah, get lost makes sense for cube is better. Cube's a good time though. I mean VRD. I, I think rotisserie came out of cube, so like the VRD has its roots in cube anyway. Right. Because people would roto draft a cube a lot. Uh, so there's the source, yeah. So it's definitely get lost. Oh hey, nice. The VRDs in Charlotte. In that case, oh, years ago. send us your old lists from uh, from Charlotte. We'd love to have uh, we'd love to have more data. Yeah, yeah. If you hop on the Discord. T Ten years ago is quite a quite a bit old data, but we always like the data period. So I mean, yeah, we we have data running back to 2010 from back when this was inside of Seattle only. But yeah, there's there's also async drafts that happen on the Discord. So if you're ever interested in doing that, they take about a month to happen. But it's just whenever you draft a card, you can take take a time, pick whatever you want. Yeah. Um, there's there's I think one is just about to spin up soon. So. Okay. Bummer. That makes sense. A lot, I mean, the, the, we like to have the two year data, but a lot of it's just no longer overly applicable anyway, right? In the world where it's kind of just fun. It's fun though. It's fun to see what was you know once. Okay, so there's a Narset on play and a Death Ray Shaman. Yeah, the that's why rate... he's attacking the Narset right now. Yeah. And so she's considering blocks. And... The death rate doesn't do a whole lot against Mason now that the just, reanimate's been cleared. Right. It, it ticks and tacks and just, you know, eats away. And... Mason doesn't have anything going on beyond the reanimate to get the Gristle Brand, right? right. Uh, he's got animate dead. There's no. Okay, there's one. All right, so in that case, losing the, the death rate is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. What Elaine just. Okay, so true name nemesis. That means that there's probably not a Dak Faden, uh, unless she thinks that was more relevant right now. Is that a hard cast troll? Yeah, hard cast troll. Nice. And that has super menace, so that yes. has to be locked by three? Menace plus one. Okay. Six, five? Yep. Menace plus one. 
Grixis Painter, yeah. A painter's uh, still very powerful. And Welder is also... Welder's fallen off quite a bit, but I think that uh, it still has a place in this format. Okay, so it's the classic race of de of uh, True Name Nemesis she versus She took the sword, I think, thing. earlier, though. Did she? She off has a sword. Right, she took off the Narset, I think. Oh, did she? Okay, I missed yeah. that. So if she has a sword, then why... I mean, why isn't she using that right now? Uh, she's probably thinking about it. I don't know. Uh, maybe she's worried about something else, like Grizzlebrand. But... Yes. There it is. Okay. okay. Swords is gone. One card left in hand. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of life, so maybe she was just thinking about the tempo or something. Alright, so he's taken down to five? That can't be right. No, he? he should be higher than that. Uh, uh, can we double check to make sure he actually gained he life off the swords? He did. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there. Now, now it's at eight. Eight, yeah. And there's an, uh, a, an Avon, whatever he's called. Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder, that's it. The accounting, Avon Accounter. And a Dress Down, a response. Excellent. Obviously, Dress Down is better when you can use it to kill a True Name, but still adequate for now. Right. Well, True Name is killable now. Is he at seven? No, he's not close to seven. No, he's at eight. So he can, he can bounce it with Teferi that's in his yeah, hand? Yeah, he can bounce it with Teferi. Uh, he has one, two, three, four. So he's at seven mana, so he's one mana away from casting Gristlebrand. How many black pips, though? He has plenty. Okay. His whole deck's black. Yeah, he's got more than enough right now. He's got Swamp, Jet, uh, Goblet Shrine. Um, so yeah, if he if he draws a land, there's an Assassin's Trophy in hand as well, so he won't be able to use it to kill the true name, but he can potentially tempo out uh, long enough to get his uh, to get his Gristle Brain gaining life. True name comes back. Yep. He's considering the on the Assassin's is there anything? Trophy, maybe? He's making sure there's not a trigger or some window he can yeah he can do it's as it comes um, in. He has subtlety in hand. Is that subtlety? No, no subtlety sideboard. He's so. actually got a sidebinder, I think. Oh, yeah. tidebinder. So you see if there was a trigger. That's why he checked because when in as or two right. things. Yeah. He I, wanted, I think the tidebinder is going to be countering the mm -hmm. ledger shredder trigger. Right. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see trigger language on the. Turns out there's trigger. no trigger. There's no trigger. Replacement effect, right? It's as it or comes into play. It's, it's a clone. That's what I said. Right. Yeah. When and as are two different things. Yep. You could actually dress down in response to... And she showed counter and he scooped. Yep. I okay. don't know what counter she showed, but... She... Probably a literal counter spell. Right. Yeah, I think she drew that earlier, so... You, you can dress down in response to true name. I have to verify this, because suppose, um, dress down's a weird card, and the creature looks into the state it would be in when, uh, after it enters the battlefield, and, true, and dress down says it loses all abilities. Uh, yeah, you never get to name anything. Yeah. So with Painter, you never get to name a color. It just comes yeah. in as a one free. So Correct. Tree name never gets to. You don't get to choose a player. Yeah. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Dress down is a Dress down's mocked up card. <laughs> Dress down says judge hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we pull up Mason's list? I'm, I'm curious about what he has. Uh, what what he actually has on the board. I'll pop this over here and boom. So. Out of the board. Okay, Death Shadow might be okay here. Caustic Bronco. Yeah, so I mean, the question is does he uh, side out some of the reanimator stuff and bring in, like, Spellcore is really good. Mastermind's nuts in this matchup. Yeah, Force might be fine. Maybe. I don't know. Two for one yourself in a control matchup, so right. usually not great. Leovold is pretty good. Lingering Soul seems good. Actually, Elaine's, none of her draw spells say draw. They're all just look at the top, whatever. It's just cyclers, depends on. That's true. It, it yeah. depends on how she's using them. You know, it'll force her to use them on her turn only. Right? Yeah, it, it turns off divert. It punishes the removal. Yeah. yeah. You, you get the draw off right. the removal, right? It effectively gives your creatures war and you draw a card. Mm -hmm. I'm just keeping an eye. Yeah. Uh, so, Dismember doesn't stop true name. What, what answers does he have to true name? Nothing. I mean, yeah. other than dress down. Subtlety? Yeah. Subtlety? Subtlety, yeah. yeah. Subtlety, yeah. Subtlety, yeah. Subtlety, yeah. Subtlety, yeah. Subtlety, Maybe, yeah, Force doesn't stop that. Spell Spell need it. Yeah. What does Caustic Bronco do? Is that card it's that bob. It attacks. Okay. It's the saddle bob. So yeah. probably too, probably not good enough in this matchup. Nope. Um, unless he wants to side out the reanimator package and play a slower game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so maybe just Leovold. Leovold and uh, Subtlety and Spellcaller. 
Yeah. Yeah, spell core seems really good. Mastermind does seem stronger though, right? Like, it seems fine. Card? Yeah, it okay. seems good. I mean, she gets to draw, she draws a card. He gets to draw a card, basically, right? And it does flash, and then you can force your opponent to draw a card with the activated ability. Yeah, but all of this does kind of rely on him siding out of the reanimator strategy. Yeah, and the her sh- not having Narset. True. Is her sideboard uh, a graveyard centric at all? I do not believe so. So at that point, then cutting out your reanimator isn't that great. She brings in the Orvar. Oh, I thought that was in the main. Okay. Yeah, she brings in the Orvar. Uh, potentially the Purge. She might bring in Wraths to answer the big dumb right. guys. It's uh, artifacts and enchantments. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, it does look like it. Doesn't, yeah. yeah, she's kind of weak in this matchup. She's right. But the Orvar is very good. I mean, we'll she just over. she just beat a double him. I mean, that seems, you oh, know. No, no, no. I'm not saying she's bad. I'm just right. saying that her sideboard is not strong in this matchup. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I think being the double him kind of uh, shows the weakness in Mason's build, which is just he. He has no way to bridge from what he's doing in the early game quickly to the reanimator package. Yeah, he's right. at the whims of the top deck plus a handful of Xerox spells. All right, looks like consider first instead of the Thought Scour. He takes it. It's a watery grave. You can't misdirect the consider, right? You cannot misdirect consider. You right. can misdirect thought the Thought Scour. But you can't misdirect Mental Note. You cannot misdirect Mental Note. No. He's played a lot of Mental Note. I sure do. <laughs> yeah, I There's know. an IOK in hand as well as a Teferi. <laughs> And that's a fairy mastermind as well, I think. Yeah. It's an interesting time having all these judge levels in a room yeah. to discuss the <laughs> minutia of what goes on with this format. It's a lot of fun. Or oh, maybe it's a Tishana side tidebender, that blue card there. Mm, yeah, it could be. T I S H. Yeah, this card has seemed very strong to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's an attra- Assassin's Trophy. So he has, he's leaving the Assassin's Trophy up, as well as uh, either a Mastermind or a Tidebinder. I can't tell spell which. Core. There's a Spell Core as well, right? Yeah. The, the third card there on the left. This hand looks good for him. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It's a Mastermind. Yeah. Maze's hand looks like he's playing modern right now. Not to say it's bad. <laughs> Correct. It's like modern with a, with a Mox Jet. Yeah. Hey, folks, this is Discord 14. Do you, or not Discord. I keep saying Discord because I've been doing so much. This is St. Lotus 14. Uh, and uh, we have uh, three announcers in the room. Join uh, Mason at 1-1 and Elaine at 2-0. Mason's a three-time champ here, and Elaine's a two-o- two-time champ. Uh, She's coming out of retirement to try to take Mason down. Finally. Yeah, yeah, no, this is a heck of a match, right? She, she retreated to Canada, and, you know, we, we invited her back for this. We said, you know, you're, you're a dirty Canuck, but we'll, you know, we'll let you back home, you know. And yeah, she took the first game, so that's a good. It's, it's nice to see it happen. Yeah, see somebody give Mason the business. I know everyone from Chicago is also excited to watch him lose. I don't know who am I rooting for this match. I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of the two villains of VRD. Yeah, I know. Okay. I've lost to them both, and uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, actually, I don't. I've only played Elaine once, and I actually beat her. So I um, uh, look at you. I think I'm one and zero against Elaine. That was in the first, my in VRD two, St. Lotus two. I. That was where we had the three-way tie between Dan, where she beat Dan, Dan beat me, and I beat her. And uh, that we were all uh, five and twos. It's pretty great. So these two creatures, we have a Letter Shredder and a Fairy Mastermind. They're kind yeah. of two sides of the same coin. Which of these creatures do you like more in VRD? I like Mastermind better. The Shredder seems so good, but I don't know. I just end up, like, I'm just... F-A-I-E-R. I, I think. Yeah, I've lost, lost a lot of resources to it. Like, I think in, like, Constructed, like, it's pretty easy to... Um, get value out of those resources, and but it was shredder with the the can I be enforced or whatever? Yes. Like it just feels like I end up losing resources that I don't want to lose. Um, that makes sense. So it, I think it's definitely underperformed. Uh, I actually found the same thing in, in uh, Commander actually, uh, where I, I had a couple decks I thought it was going to be an all star in, and I was just like, I'm going to discard a lot of cards I don't want to discard. And yeah. I mean, Fairy Mastermind also, I think, doesn't do a whole lot that often, but the fail case of being a two-mana flash, two-on flyer is pretty good. Uh, Mastermind's been really good against me. Uh, Ever is a big fan online mm-hmm. of Mastermind, and, like, it's it's crushed me. All right, we got a V-Click coming out at Sorcery Speed because there's a Teferi in play, of right. course. Uh, revealing the whole hand. And right. we, we've already seen this whole hand for Mason. I okay. Inquisition. It's Inquisition, Spell Queller. Uh, Ash Trophy. Uh, a bro- Assassin's Trophy. And then the other two cards. Yeah. There's a, one of them is a land. One of them is basic land. Okay. And the other one is something. 
I mean, yeah. You certainly can consider keeping this entire hand and just saying keep it. Yeah, you take the core. Right that makes so, sense to me yeah. too. Yeah, I don't know what that third card is. It's a swamp honest. at the end for sure. I don't, yeah, I yes. don't know. Or a forest, I don't know. Oh. Did you see what the third card down in Mason's hand was? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so Mason has one unknown card. Oh, it's Thought Scour. Thought Scour okay, the third card we knew. It's that white border in that Thought Scour. It does throw me off. It's throwing me off. <laughs> and the. F okay. Showing that same IOK we already know about. Yeah. Yeah, if you push the spell caller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have one unknown, two unknowns. And Elaine's hand's still fairly unknown, but the Teferi in play makes it a whole lot more interesting because he she can't use all of the uh, she can't use all of her counter spells. Right, so we're gonna eye on. Oh, probe. Okay, probe was the last one. Yeah, we're gonna. So we, got, we need the shredder. Um, spell pierce, dig through time. Ponder. Yes. I see some orbs <laughs> to ponder there. Um, night night uh, ambusher. Oh, night Nightpack pack Ambusher. Night on pack the left ambusher there. on the end. And then, oh, the second one is the the new one, the one one mana spree blue card that's okay. been taking over standard. Okay, the spree counter spell. Yeah, spree you'll cancel. have to pull it up in the scryfall chat. Three steps ahead. It's three steps ahead, right? So it's a counter spell if you need it to. Okay. It's a draw spell if you need it to be. Mm -hmm. That is actually mm -hmm. the spell that tipped mm -hmm. over standard is exactly how I referenced mm -hmm. it. When yeah. She <laughs> it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to. If you want. It's it's impossible. <laughs> in this view, yeah. it's only yeah. time for the other one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, three. So that's a uh, spree. You can cancel for cancel mana. You can upgrade it, or you can do a blue and three to create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. A blue and two to draw two cards and discard a card, or you can combine those in some way. So, but her hand is pretty owned by this Teferi. So as yeah. long as Mason can keep her on sorcery speed, right. Her hand doesn't do a ton. Obviously, like these cards are all still okay. Right. Sorcery speed. The trophy helps here, right? Yeah. Like, um, I feel like he he's I okay to clear something. I don't even know what he's taking, but after that point, I think you take the shredder. I think I just take the shredder here. Just stop the pressure, right? I mean, you can't take the night pack, which is what you want the most, but you are trophy the night pack. Yeah, well, I think you have to trophy the, the V click. Uh, well, the V click can't. Oh, get you're gonna through. block with the you're gonna mind. block with the mastermind. Okay, that makes sense. You, you hope she doesn't draw removal and block with the mastermind, right? Yep. Like. Because you're just going to get... Well, and if she draws draw removal, you just Assassin's Trophy that and then hope right. to find an answer to the Night Pack. Nope, she, he's going to just get rid oh, of it. Oh, okay. That's interesting to do that. Oh, it's a Corrupt Decay. So he still has the Assassin's Trophy in hand. Oh, okay. okay. So he's holding the Assassin's Trophy back for the Night Pack Ambusher. And Elaine's like, I'm not playing fit, hand, fit, fit the cards up. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why he would do this at Sorcery Speed, but maybe I'm missing something there. And he wanted to get the damage in. Just a little nickel and dime. Like, oh, sure. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I, I was like, is there some like in, some uh, misdirection that gets around to fairy? But no, she, yeah, she's got double green at this point. So, can you cycle in response to to fairy, or is it, it stops? Okay, so she can still complicate things. Yeah, she can still complicate. She can be complicated. Yeah, it's it's not relevant for assassin right. for abrupt decay, but it is for assassin's trophy. She has, right. he has to really stay heads up against complicate. Right, but well, she's tapped out right now. So sure. So right now is the window. People for the, have night pack ambusher. I know it like. Pumps out when, copies of a spell. When or he doesn't, like when she doesn't play a, sp if she doesn't play a spell at the end of her turn, okay. it makes a wolf, a two-two wolf. Got it. Okay. So I, she I, has to play on her own. Turn. Yeah. You ba you're basically you play counter spell. You play on their turn. Yes, which is not very easy to do with Teferi and Blood. Right. So and it's I, dead to the. I played this quite a bit uh, for. Uh, there was a pioneer deck with Wilderness Reclamation and uh, Scarab God. Sure. That in this that was a really good deck, and I played it quite a bit, and it's a lot of fun. There's a caustic horse of some kind across That's there. That's the yep, caustic yeah. bronco. So we got a. Uh... We got our outlaws running wild. We have a new dark confidant in play. Yeah. And mastermind cannot saddle it because it's a saddle three. Uh, I think Mason's fine taking damage. Yeah, no, Mason's fine taking damage, but still, like you know, it is relevant, right? Because like tra chucking cards at her head seems, you know. Yeah, it's true, it, and it probably will deal more than three damage anyway. Yeah, like especially in a world where he's got where Grizzle Daddy's in his deck, right? Like unless he's signing out Grizzle. Yeah, I like this because uh, because we're at the spot where it looks like it's going to be able to go to a third game, and that means more of this match. Yeah. Yeah, Ambusher. That that I loved that deck. That. Um, uh, 
scared guy by a pack ambusher. <laughs> it ran sensor because it was just like <laughs> every deck ran sensor. Yeah, every deck in Pioneer ran sensor for a little bit. Teferi has really just dominated this game. Teferi will do that against the control deck. Man. Yes. I mean, it's uh, there's a dig through time just finding dig through time. They found three cover spells. Yeah, yeah I think you find an Oko at the end. Uh, yes, there's an Oko as the last one. But yeah, it was like mana drain counter spell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it might just be take land and Oko. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't have she doesn't have anything of her own to Oko, so it's not gonna be able to pressure, and it's not like turning off any of these creatures does anything. Oko is still great, but ironically, turning off any one of these creatures makes them larger. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so she just in Oko. It's I mean, turn off the Bronco. At least she's drawing cards. I mean, sure. that's, that is something. Yeah. Maybe I mean you can Oko and plus, but then Teferi just minus. I don't know. Yeah, we're just gonna replay the Shredder. Plus. Fair point. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the commentary you all pay for. Yeah. And you paid its value. <laughs> Yikes. Oko is so stupid. There's a thought scour. Yeah. We hit Death Shadow and a JVP. Death Shadow is dead if he plays it now, but getting close to life. Correct. And there's probably still at least one reanimate. Oh, that's a, a Street Wraith in hand. Yeah, there's well. a Street Wraith, so. So he, it's it. live whenever he it's wants. It's live whenever he wants, man. <laughs> it's still live! He did bring in Death Shadow in this match. He did, so that means he signed out the remake package. He's been signing it out for the okay. Death Shadow package, basically. Like... Yeah, but why is he... What is he... Is he thinking about casting the Street Wraith? Like, what's uh, the thought here? There's Fetch. I can't see what the other card is. So he's going to Bronco... Street Wraith is a 3-3, isn't it? Street Wraith is a 3-4. Oh, 3-4. It could have saddled the... Uh, uh, well, it costs 5 mana, though. Oh, okay. He can't yeah. cast it. Oh, Vindicate. Oh, Street... Yeah, the Street's Wraith also um, messes with uh, the Ledger Shredder. It triggers the Ledger Shredder. Oh, that's, that's so, a great point. Yeah, so if he does it on this turn, it triggers the Shredder. Got so it. So you don't want to do it on this turn. That makes total sense. So he has the Vindicate to use whenever he wants to, but he's yeah. holding it back. So now he can straight wraith this turn during her turn and be fine. And he did reveal, uh, he must have revealed the Vindicate right. to the. And mom. it took three out, and that's why it's at 10. Yeah. Yeah, Teferi has been a house in the. And, yeah, and it's instant speed because of Teferi, so he can yes. simply just Vindicate at will. Vindicate is a. I love that that card still sees play. Okay, so Ledger Shredder, he's allowing it to hit. Yeah, he's like one. Oh, okay, sure. One. Cool. Cool story, bro. Cool story, man. Yep, so he has the Street Wraith coming through, probably at the end of turn, to draw a card, because it won't hurt him anything. Troll? Is that the other one? I just can't tell. It's look a little slower, Mason. It does look like a troll to me. Yeah, it looks like a troll. It's that, that alt art, whatever. No, no, it's but, the base. Yeah, the border's a little different on it, though. Uh, it's a white border. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you want a swamp cycle, do you? Is that a duck faden? Uh, I did not see. It's tapping oh, mana for one. Right, right. The, the, the mana is enough for a deck. That's what I mean. It could also be putting a Lutri into hand. True. No, it's no, Oko. It's the Oko. Okay. Uh, Oko making a thing, maybe. Let's make a food. It's pretty uneventful, but not a lot else to do. I mean, what? Fairies 2 1? Fairy's a 2-1, and the horse two, is a 2-2. Two. Two, two. So you can't kill Oko if you make a food, so... Right. Uh, unless Mason has a Vindicate, which can kill an Oko. Right, yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, Mason can kill what he wants to, but it's the... Yeah. Back when they still printed cards that said any permanent. Yeah. Okay, Oko is going up. Me. In one of the two ways that Oko can go up, because man, people aren't using the pee pee poo poo tokens. We've we, we've lost uh, we've lost control of the game, man. That's true. Is it you know what that means? We got to. They're also using the small dice. Right. We got to go on sabbatical, yeah. and uh, we're just gonna have to come back in a little while later. And, yep. uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're never streaming again. Right. People don't use the tokens we want. All right, so fetching, finding something to get. <laughs> Okay, it's a basic, because I think he's, he just doesn't have that many fetchables oh, left. Flooded the Strand. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. there's still the... Um, Lots of green. Yes. The Overgrown Tomb is still 
mm -hmm. loading the list, but there's no other vegetable to get it. Yeah. Okay. Basic planes. It is decided. And he's gonna. He draw, he's gonna draw two. She's gonna draw one. For me, having said this game looks over like twelve turns ago, it's still going pretty strong. Yeah, 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 for sure. Let's preordain Vindy. And to be clear, he was drawing two off of the mastermind. Somehow? Yeah, well, he triggered. He drew. He activated the mastermind, right. which makes you draw one. But then she drew one. He gets to draw one. Correct. So. Okay. So he draws two. So we activate. Wait, sh should the ledger shredder have triggered? What happened there? Uh, the ledger shredder triggers off second spell. Got it. Okay, I thought it was second card. There we go. Is, so, is so it second spell, or second card. Second spell. Okay. Second spell. So, so the street. He could. He could have street. Yeah, yeah, I was wrong. I was, the, I was thinking second yeah. card. So the, the the rub on Elaine's turn was she couldn't. There there is a way where she could cast a second spell on trigger ledger shredder and not have Oko die to vindicate before she could use it by casting Oko as a second spell on the turn. Yeah. But you. you you open up the avenue for a strong vindicate if you cast a second spell. All right, so we snapcaster the uh, abrupt on the Oko, and, and then she gets the connive trigger. She she's it. conniving right now, yeah. And uh, presumably discarding something that doesn't make the ledger shredder bigger. Yeah, I did. Oh no, no, no there it is. Yeah. I didn't see what the discard was. But. Something blue. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> something borrowed something blue. She's yeah. saddling up. Oh, nice. There and it is. I throw it the head. And it looks like a land. Nice. Got there with a flood, a hallowed fountain. Yeah. Oh, so there, there were, there was a hallowed fountain left that he could have gotten. He just chose not to send his life down. Yeah. Well, he wanted to even matter one of the mana. If he wanted to make the, yeah, he could have picked that up. If he wanted to make the the death shadow larger. Correct. Preordain. Right. Preordain. There's a Teferi of Hero of Dominaria. All right, that's probably worth making the ledger shredder bigger. Wait no, it's already it's already right. triggered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. I, was, I was wondering that if you left the Teferi on top, leave both on top, draw the one, and leave the Teferi, and then uh, no, nah, it doesn't matter. Because I was going to you Bronco the Teferi in her head basically. Oh god. But like not with the preordained. You no. Could, you'd have to be able to bury a couple deep. Yeah. And the Shredder's only a two two. It'll be a three three, which won't kill the Tef. Yeah. So you need instant speed portent. Alright, so with Teferi out after it's activated, Elaine could quicken. <laughs> Cast. Well, she wouldn't be able to quicken because she didn't draft quicken. That's so that's the, that's the rub. Yeah. Well, she also couldn't quicken because of Teferi. That's a good point. Also the rub. <laughs> There's two rubs here. She could turn Teferi into a Back creature college, and then cast, cast the rest down. She drafted Alchemist Refuge. Because all ah, yeah, yeah. It's a land, so it gets run Teferi. There was two rubs in college, but they kicked me out of the dorms after that. Oh, the fact that you repeated the joke three to two times. I repeated it one time. Because <laughs> I didn't get to the punchline. I see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't repeated two times. I said it once, repeated it once. <laughs> so there's a Narset in play. She's a pretty good card. Yeah, Narset's definitely good here. I want to see Brandon next camera, though, because I want to see some uh, temporal manipulations sent to top of libraries off Mystical Dispute. Mystical, uh, whatever, tutor. Brandon's been having a time, but I think he... Don't think he's having a great day. He either lost the game or the match to just infinite strip mine. That's brutal. Yeah. yeah. Which so, is normally what he does to people. Right, he likes to do that. Yeah. But he was actually able to sack the lands to Zerin Orb. So, nice. Yeah, a little bit of value. So what is Mason? Mason's here. He's just going to be grinding value out of both of these Teferis, ideally. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Narset makes that a little harder. Is he just going to be pressuring that with these creatures? I mean, he can choose to... If Narset's really a problem, he can just choose to vindicate it there, right? I mean, uh, Didn't he use the... No, no he he's used not. The still in hand, yeah. Okay. He flashed back the Decay with uh, Snap Casting. Got it. So yeah, Vindicate's still just floating free. Yes. Yeah. And Elaine probably has at least three or four dead cards in hand off of this Teferi. Yeah. He's offering the deck. He gets to draw a card off of the card. She drew off the connive. Yeah. And he still gets the one draw through Narset. But at this point, now deck right. can plus on Mason to make him... Just right, which she just did. <laughs> and he said, here's some lands. Have those. Yep. Yeah. 
I mean, she's kind of clawing back into this game, though. She is. She is, man. It's all unprotected planeswalkers, but still. Mason doesn't have a ton of pressure. Celestial Purge on the horse. Bye-bye, Bromphodont. Oh, and it Bromphodont. looks like three damage coming at Teferi. Mm -hmm. So still alive. But now he has to decide how he wants to how he wants to keep Teferi alive. All right, so he's got no creatures. You kill Narset right here. You double swing, kill Narset. Um, and then kill the um, Ledger Shredder. So you're going to let uh, Dak hang out? Yeah, you let Dak hang at this point. Like, Dak sure. did his job. Like, once Narset's gone, you don't care. That's fair. Right. Yeah, I agree with this. Uh, he's going to play Teferi first. Right. Just because why not? Well, that means he's not going to. He can get rid of. Uh, he can just tuck the Shredder if he wants. That or, means. Or, or plus it. <gasps> oh, he used it before he killed Narset. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's brutal. Yeah. So yeah, now he goes and kills Narset, accepts the L there. But now the Ledger Shredder, no, now he's going to do that. He still gets the untap. He's still, oh. Right, oh. well, I was saying, my, my plan was, see, my plan was not the Teferi. My plan was you kill the Narset, uh, do the Vindicate on the Ledger Shredder, but now the Ledger Shredder can kill baby Teferi. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think you, right. vindic you vindicate the Ledger Shredder. Right, or if you play the big Narset, or the big, the big Teferi, you tuck the Ledger Shredder. <coughs> Sure. And kill yeah. the Narset. Basically, yeah. the goal was protect the fairy. Oh, he got the untap, though, so... Yeah, no, no matter... Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. You, you vindicate the Ledger okay. Shredder. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the, true. The I forgot, I forgot the untap. Yeah. yeah. You're right. I get what you're saying now. Uh, but yeah, this is, I think it was a choice between whether you let her get the new card off Narset or right. whether you let her get the double loot off Dak. Yeah. Right. Because now the Narset's dead to the flyer. Correct. Or to the ground creature. Yeah, <laughs> well, she doesn't play another creature. Yeah, yeah, fair. And there's still another Teferi here backing it up. Mm -hmm. And this big Teferi is a minus three, is that right? And then it's minus a minus three. seven? Min eight. Oh, minus eight? Really? Minus eight. Oh. But, it, but it wins the game, I mean. Sure. Yeah, it's a, that's a much longer... I played this card, but it's a much longer kill than I thought. Yeah, it's kind of close to a Jace... Kind of Especially with um, Fairy Mastermind, where you're drawing, <laughs> you draw one, exile permanent, do that, yeah. draw two more, <laughs> exile two permanents. Yeah, it's pretty silly. It's like capsizes buyback. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so everyone's drawing lots of cards. Uh, Mason is drawing more of them. You just send me your schedule, Mark. You need to. Uh, so we, I want you to come up for some commanders sometime. Yeah, and we'll go out to impact do it. What night is Commander out there? It's, just, it's I mean, any night we can play some open. I'll oh, get Cody. Nice. You just give me a night, me, you, and Cody will play. Yeah. I don't care if anyone else is there, right? Like, cool. I prefer no one else being there. I mean, to be honest. <laughs> I want to go out and ask for a count, but I feel like this is a leading question. Do you think Mason loses the decking at some point? No. No. Do you, do you think there's the opportunity for I mean, unless she brought in a Wrath and... I mean, he, he's, he has four damage presented, and he just has been sending out walkers instead, but... That's a three-turn clock. It's not like he's drawing six cards a turn or anything. True name. True name's pretty good. True name's pretty good. True name's a way of interacting with... Uh, Teferi. Yeah. Yep. And Orvar. Okay. Yeah, Mason really could use a forcible right here. Because Teferi can't talk true name. Is it no. Dress Down is kind of the best Dress Down is his, his only answer to true name. Oh, there's a Leovold. Leovold, and, and Tashana Tidebinder in hand as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he needs, to, he needs to take out Narset before he does anything, probably. Right. And then he can plus Teferi, see if he can draw something. But yeah, he's in a, he's in a tenuous spot. Because as soon as this little Teferi dies, all those counter spells that have been languishing all game. Yeah, he started to roll it, and then he realized, but he, yeah. a, he realized his mistake. Doesn't want to do it again. It is just so instinct that you just are used to, okay, that before I do anything, I might as well draw a card. Right. <laughs> like, Narsa makes that all change a little bit. Is he minusing? Minusing on Orvar. How interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, he wants to... But you can't keep your ter own Teferi alive anyway. Right. But you can keep one of them alive, and... I, I, don't, I don't know what he's trying to do win with if not I mean, make sure we draw the orvar right like i think there's some tempo play there what does he got he's got lingering souls in hand 
Oh, he swung at her. Okay, so he's just trying to close the game. Right. So he just dropped troll. And he put two damage in, so now there's 11 need to happen. True name can kill one of the Teferis, which so, is just saying I can win with the cards I have. Right, she, she attacks with, so she didn't run herself down off that off that damage. So she's at nine, right? So he's got eight presenting. If she attacks with true name, he's got lethal presenting, unless she drops a creature. Yeah, and eight, eight of it is unblockable, effectively. Yeah. This is the kind of play that is very good that I would never see because I can never remember that damage is how you kill people. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, that's one of the things I think Lorcana is getting me a little better at. Where there's plays where like, like, you just kind of have to keep track of how many, how much lore mm -hmm. can they gain the next turn. And so I, I, I think I'm getting a little better at that whole like, when I'm playing for combo, keeping track of it. Sometimes just I've just got to damage, you yeah. know. <laughs> I've got to just eke out that little extra bit. Yeah, so Elaine's hand is... So the orb bar here makes point. sense because, you know, it tucks the blocker. Do you think Mason remember that there's a food token in play? No, I don't think he did. Because there's three points of right. life right there. Right. And Elaine has infinite mana. Elaine's doing complex algebra here. Yeah. I expect that if Elaine does lose any matches today, it'll be at the end of the day when she's very tired. Mm. <laughs> Okay, she spent a lot of mana to cast something. What is happening? Five mana? Treachery. Oh, sick. Oh. Treachery on the troll. All right. I mean, he can tuck the treachery, but now he can't attack back. He can't tuck the treachery because um, it's, it's at two. So. It's at two. Wow. That probably seals the deal. I, I'm sure Mason has draws. Yeah, but that's that's pretty. It would be pretty good if you had a. Well, also, Narset's still alive. Yeah, he's, okay, you know, now he's yeah, pivoting. Yeah, yeah. Going pivot. To I, 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 that was smart, right? Like, yeah. yeah. I had a plan. <laughs> now I'm, I need to draw this card. Now I can get Leovold deployed at least. To hopefully draw me something. Oh, he's at nine. So yeah, he's yeah. he's facing down, uh, infinite blocks, infinite damage too. Yeah. He needs to have two more creatures in order to block that troll. He's got a Tide Binder in hand. Uh, he, he can block the troll. What's his third creature? Spell Queller, I think oh, I see. Oh, and Leobold. <laughs> yeah, Le like Leobold Tide Binder can do it. Sure can. I mean, he's not good, but you know, it's not what you want to be doing. I mean, that does force her to probably split attacks as well. At that point, he doesn't have to block the troll if he lets his Teferi die. Because she either has to threaten lethal on him or threaten Teferi. So if she threatens lethal on him, then he can uh, flash in the Tide Binder to be the third block. There's so a yeah, You go Leovold first, force her to attack however she wants to, flash and in then the... you can use your Tide Binder to... Or spell Spellcaller? Oh, that's oh, a Lingering Souls. Oh, that's a great way of making that's, lots of creatures. Yeah, oh, that's a good Linger. All right, let's get two oh, there Brandons we go. out. We got some Brandons. Sorry, two Dr. P Hoo Hoo MDs. Yeah. Two He's physician tokens. Very real doctor. Yes. Oh, Lutri. Yeah. He gets the untap too. Which means he still has spell in hand too. Correct. Right, so. And Tidebinder. Yeah, both with Flash, so. Yeah, this is still a game. She popped the food to go back to 12. Good. Okay. Yeah, who would you rather be in the spot? Is it still Elaine? In this spot right here? Yeah. I, mean, I feel pretty good if I'm Elaine. Like... Yeah, clearing the little Teferi was a big deal. Yeah. Like, I understand the, pl the play he was going for there, but... Um... This is, once again, another lesson in why you should never attack your opponent and just always answer threats instead. Lorcana led you wrong. <laughs> So, yeah, Treachery is a card that has fallen out of fashion, that it's a cube all-star. Right. It's, it's also fallen out of fashion in cube, to be fair, in Vintage Cube. Um, but, I mean, it is doing work here. Yeah. It certainly turned that game around. 
We also haven't seen... What's the five mana treachery that can hit anything? It exiles a permanent and then makes a copy of it or something? Commandeer? No, Fractured Identity. Fractured Identity. We that does see play online a lot. Okay. We haven't seen it here. But it sees quite a bit of play online. Okay, that's a good one. But yeah, both of those cards don't... I mean, they don't see as much play as they used to. Right. All right, looks like they are all attacking, presumably all attacking Mason. The loot tree flashing in actually changes my math. Yeah, no, it makes the math hard. You can still you can still block enough to stay alive. By a lot, actually. Yeah, yeah. And he does get one more use of Teferi. He can Teferi the Treachery <coughs> if he wants to. Uh, can it hit enchantments? I don't know if it can. Oh, he can Teferi his own creature. Right. He can hit uh, creatures, planeswalkers, and artifacts, enchantments. The trouble is that he still, no matter what he does, he's still facing down his true name, unless he can find a dress down. And even then, I don't know what the dress down does. Teferi, comma, hero. Alright, so he's triple blocking, presumably something. He did flash in the spell color. Oh, it's not mine permanent. Okay, it's not mine permanent. So I thought, it, yeah. But it's you... No, it, it's in it, yeah. yeah. It, it, the other one can only hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't hit Planeswalkers. And he's blocking with enough power to kill the creature. Okay, mm -hmm. so he's only taking three. He's going to six. Right. And he'll be stable, uh, meaning he has two more turns. Right. There's an Orvar. Okay. The Orvar we all knew about. And he has two creatures left. Elaine's sitting at 12. Library That's does not do it actually there. Yeah. Street Wraith is the other card. So he can Street Wraith to put more pressure on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unblockable, I assume? That's, Actually, a, that's a Treasure Cruise. That's... who. But he's counting cards in deck. <laughs> Going back to your earlier question. Full cycle, Peter. Oh, oh he's counting cards in deck. Oh, that Treasure Cruise don't look so hot. That looks like a pretty thin deck. Well, the problem is that it's not that his Treasure Cruise is going to kill him. It's that he doesn't have any cards left in his deck that win him the game. Yeah. I'm sure Dress Down's in there somewhere. Yeah. Oh, he's exiling his... Flashback Lingering Souls. Okay, I was going to say, he's exiling no, the Lingering yeah. Souls to Treasure Cruise? No, no, no. it's Flashback Lingering Souls. That makes sense. Uh, and then if he plays the Street Wraith, that's a pretty strong clock. I think that might switch the clock, right? Because he has two more turns no matter it's what. 3-4? Four. It's a 3-4? Four. Yeah, it feels pretty good. It can block it's, Orvar. It's not unblockable, though. Right, but it can block Orvar. Yes. Because it's 3-3. Three, three. Okay. So he's swinging for four in the air to start. Yeah. The food is now gone already. Yeah, so gone. She's, she's effectively at eight. He's cruising. <laughs> you only live once. YOLO! Man. I think he's going to have two cards left in his deck, but that's fine. He only has yeah. two turns left in the game. <laughs> it's going to make you sweat till you bleed. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Oh, he's three cards. Three cards. Okay. Ah, yeah. that's, he has that's, way that's, too that's many all cards. the cards in the world. <laughs> <laughs> if Elaine draws Dak Faden, she just wins. This is where Ancestral... Dak's dead. Yeah, this is yeah. where Ancestral gets into aggro mode. You yeah. Just Ancestral your opponent and win oh, the Oh, time walk. Wow. Oh, that's... That's, that's pretty good. She didn't change the life. Now she's at eight because she finally changes the life. Man. Is he, has he played Snap? Yeah, he has played Snap yet this game because it blocked earlier. And he already used Jace, right? J J J JPP got uh, milled. No, uh, milled, okay. Milled. Yeah. There's Tide Banner for more damage. Yeah. Okay, so he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's a uh, land and a uh, so Street Wraith and a Library of Alexandria. If So yeah, but if he plays the Street Wraith, it doesn't do anything. No, we just have minus bounce Orvar and exact same. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Him. That verify. Him just to clear. That's true, because yeah, now she does have counter spells so, available. One, two. Yeah, bounce over bar. Does the duck. There, there it is. Oh, oh wow. God. What a great game. Oh, slide over there, Peter. I got to walk this one off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you do your thing. Uh, why don't you come back with the uh, the most American of beers as well afterwards? All right. I, I, all right. That wow. was fantastic. Dude, that was... Whew. That was a... Oh, going to game three. Jesus. I'm excited about this. That was a slobber knocker, man. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I like it a That's lot. That's an old wrestling term from uh, uh, J.R. Ross. He, uh, what is a slobber knocker? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
uh, yeah, I mean, from what we saw the Orvar, we, right. we didn't see anything else, right? Not really. Uh, she didn't bring in the Wraths. I mean, she could. I mean, a Wrath oh, might Celestial be. Celestial Purge. Purge, yeah, the Purge, yeah. Um, but yeah, not much. Yeah, I don't think either of the boards are particularly good against each other, right? Like, yeah, he, Mason does a lot of I mean, he just to reanimate and bring in the more creature thing. Correct, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel like... His, his deck feels a whole lot like sideboard that takes him from a 6 to a 7 in a bunch right. of different matchups, but not like things that are real haymakers. That treasure cruise, that paid dividends. Yeah, though. no, it got the time walk, right? I mean, that was the... Turns out that Ancestral Recall and Time Walk are pretty good together. Yeah. We're seeing his whole deck. Yeah, he's just... Yeah, none of the reanimate cards in there. He's just kind of making a decision if he wants to go back or not. Do you think Elaine ends up taking more counter spells out after that match and just says, you know, no, just the fairy's too I good? Mean, I think you just hope to counter it, right? Like, yeah. especially as she's on the play. That's true. That right. helps. Yeah. Like, on the draw, the fairy bullets are out, right? But, yeah. like, on the play, she gets to play, play, right? So, no, you not at all. That makes sense. He only has one piece of fast mana as well, only in the Mox Sapphire. Right. Thank you very much. All right. We are St. Lotus, representing here from St. Louis, Missouri, home of Budweiser and Anheuser Busch. Mm -hmm. So we are excited to be uh, to be here. And you're not Steven, but and, uh, you can do your best impression. We'll switch back to the other view, just so you don't have to live under his brain. Under his? That's how you see that one? Oh, it's all over here. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Looks like they are shuffling up right now. Is all you? Um, they're shuffling up right now. We are watching the two champions of Vintage Root History Draft uh, in their face-off match here. Uh, Elaine got to a quick victory in Game 1. Mason got to a very slow victory in Game 2. Uh, but they were both really interesting matches. So we don't uh, think there's going to be any sideboard updates, right? We're kind of rocking it as is. Yeah, we were just looking at that. I don't think so. I'm, I'm going to slide you out of your way. And oh, that's what that was. I was like, put you over here. Uh, yeah, we uh, we were looking at it, and I mean, Elaine literally has the Orvar and the Celestial Purge as the two cards that we saw that I think are still good. Yep. Lingering uh -huh. Souls was a nutso card that I did not anticipate. I, yeah, I did not think that was going to be coming in. It didn't seem like uh, Mason needed Lingering Souls in that matchup, but as an additional way to pressure Planeswalkers when your opponent doesn't have a lot of flyers, it does make sense. Correct. Um, he also brought in the Death Shadow, Caustic Bronco, Fairy mm -hmm. Mastermind. He, he brought in everything. Yes. I'm kind of curious what Mason's plan against Uro is, but Elaine doesn't fill her graveyard that often, and uh, she does play Dig Through Time, yeah. which is at odds with that plan. So I think his answer to Uro is to ancestor or to uh, Assassin's Trophy it twice, and just realize oh, that she can never do anything. Yep. Yeah. Because um, yeah, that, that happens in, like a. Uh, Last time I played against Uro and Legacy. Oh, same thing. it's another turn one him. Is it okay? I he saw was... the jet. I didn't know what we were lining up for. I saw the Leovold, and I was excited about a turn two Leovold. He top decked the uh, he top decked the him okay. for his turn, which means that now he can turn one him. Assuming yeah. the other, he has a black source in hand. Got it. I guess the probe is a good way to see if you want to actually launch the him now or next turn. Exactly. Because if Elaine's going to make any kind of move, it's the opportune. So we have Night Pack, Ambusher, Treachery, two lands, yeah. swords, and a, ponder. and a ponder. Yeah. So. There's a really good assumption we can make that next turn Elaine's gonna kick off the ponder to Xerox. So Mason drew into a preordain. Yes, I agree. Uh, Mason drew into a preordain. I don't see a black. Another oh, no, there. Yeah, there's no black mana, so he can't do the turn one him because he okay. doesn't have his Urborg. Okay. Oh, Mason but, ended up at the Urborg. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, he is firing at his Caustic Horse Bronco. Oh. Caustic Bronco. Caustic Brontodon. Brontodon. That's my Bronco Don. Yeah. That's funny. So yeah, I mean he's gonna be pressuring yeah. pressuring uh her with card advantage right now. Ooh. Unless she uses the swords, good. Which is fine. Yeah. Okay, there's a second land. Thundering Falls. Yeah, right? so surveil land. Mm -hmm. does, does Mason have a green source? It does not look like it. He didn't he I believe has two basic islands. Okay. Dan is now three two. Nice. He lost to Brandon. Uh, to a turn one fast bond and a hex drinker he that he Brandon kind of misplayed he, around. Tell Brandon he's up next on the camera. Yeah, he's yeah. playing Adam right now. And then uh, Adam is oh, in... Preordain. Adam lost to Cody. So Adam is definitely out of the... I called him for the win, and uh, yeah. I told him he disappointed me. Uh -huh. So he'd be preordain it for a green source because I feel like we are in dire need of a... There it is. Yeah, he preordained two on top. One of them was a green land. And, and there's the time walk time to walk. get the other one. Okay. We know the the coast is clear now. We have to be dropping Leovold right now. Yes, that makes complete sense. To I don't, one, it's the only thing we can do with our hand, and two, I think it's the the opportune time because we know Elaine has zero um, counter magic. 
Troll. Cycling troll. Okay. Cycling um, troll to get... Uh, watery. Yeah. He needs a second black source mm -hmm. so we can him as well after getting the lead of the play. Yep. Oh, okay. That's right. Mason has white. Correct. You can get, you can get uh, the worst dual lands. It's kind of interesting that, I mean, given how all these decks are five color, nobody took, uh, what's the five mana O-ring, or six mana O-ring? We were talking about Leyline Binding. Yeah. We, when we were looking at Cody's deck, and Cody took Oh, he the, doesn't fire off the Leovold right now. Oh, he, okay. So you just think Elaine, Elaine's hand is that weak that it was up. He's oh, trying to, he got a land. He got the hinter, the Hinterland Harbor. And the Night Pack Ambush. Okay. But yeah, he was trying to, he was hoping to hit the Ponder, I think. Well, now you force Elaine into the Ponder, and um, I think we know Elaine's draw for the turn was the Thundering Falls. The previous turn, yes. Yes. So we have... There's an Oko and a Dak, and a land. Okay. But I we mean, know the entire context of Elaine's hand, I believe. If yes. Reason. So we uh, know the coast is Until clear. now. Yes. And she runs... She runs... Uh, I believe she runs Counterspells? Yeah, literal Counterspell. Okay, but sorry, I, th I thought she had Force of Will. She's not. No. No free counters, but Elaine did play a third land, and that taps for Jubilee. Oh, wait, okay. Did I, is there not a Leovold in the hand? Is it Assassin's Trophy that I'm confusing things there, with? There was definitely an Assassin's Trophy. I thought, yeah, I didn't... Okay, we, I think we have Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay, and Solitude. Subtlety. Yes. Solitude. God. Yes, okay, yeah. That, that makes that makes way more sense, though. So why he did not deploy the Leovold. <laughs> I, mind, I mindlessly believed you. Yeah. Uh, good, good use mm -hmm. of Subtlety. She put it on bottom. I guess she wants the Planeswalkers. I, yeah, it, it was a ponder, right? So we keep Dak and Oko on top. Draw one, play it. Draw the next. I, I just assume it. you would also want a true name. I mean, if you know your Planeswalker is going to be Oko, like, and you can basically race anything because this Planeswalker pluses for two. Correct. Literally, right? Does is subtlety flying or something? So yes, it's flying. Yes. Okay, that makes sense then, because you can't block with the right, with the. Yeah, it's subtle. Yeah, you can almost entirely outrace this card just by plussing. Yeah. It's incredibly silly. Mm -hmm. Okay. She makes the food, and then it dies to Abrupt Decay. Yeah. Which could have been Misdirect. Uh, right, did she have Misdirect? No, she didn't. She did not take the Misdirect. Okay. She has a Divert. Yeah. That's it. But that Divert can hit anything, but it had only if they pay two, right? Yeah, unless they pay two. Yeah, but uh, she was tapped out. Somebody else has Misdirect then. I, I don't think anyone took it. I think it was discussed. It was a miscalculation. Yeah, we, we, was there was miscalc. Mis there was a lot of missy, calc-y, yeah. <laughs> diverty. Alright, we got nothing else to do, so we just turn subtlety sideways. I mean, pretty good. it's clock, man. I mean, Elaine's at 11 already? I mean, it's a 3-4. Like, it's not a... <coughs> Alright, she's looking at the next next seven yeah. with uh, Dig Through Time. She's a... Uh... There's another Narset. Mm -hmm. I saw a white card. I think it might have been No More Lies. Okay. Did she have No More Lies? Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought she did. I don't think so. Does she not have No More Lies? No, she she's did. got... Um... Yeah, I don't know what the white card was. The Get Lost that we keep forgetting. Get card. Lost. <laughs> That's true. I wanted her to draft No More Lies so badly, I just want to believe. So it could be... We have not seen Leanne and Arbiter out of her this entire time. I wonder if that could be the white card. Could it's be. not even... Is it... It's in her main deck? Yeah, yeah it yeah, is. it's in the main. Huh. I don't understand that card, but that's okay. I mostly see it with Ghost Quarter, but I, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you just get it early, right? I yeah. mean, she's got the mocks, right? You can turn one it and then just... It's inconvenient, yeah. 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 Exactly. It's a... It, same thing as Blood Moon. It doesn't actually win you the game. It just slows your opponent down long enough for you to hopefully get a foothold and be able to turn yeah. the corner. That makes sense. All right, she got her fourth land. Mm -hmm. Elaine's mana base is uh, deeply good, despite being too many colors. Yep. Right, we're flashing a Malcolm here. This is one of the most interesting drafts I've seen because of, and this is not a bad thing, how slow the the, the format is. Oh, we keep bringing this card up every time. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. So when it when it attacks or does damage, uh, it's deals when combat it damage, damage to a player, right. not a planeswalker. Right. It you gets put a counter, a chorus counter on it, and then and you loot, and you loot, and then it has four counters on it. Or and more. You can cast the card for free. Yes. Or, yeah. Or more. Right. Yep. I thought about this card actually in VRD. Like I think mm -hmm. it's solid. Uh, we were, yeah, once you once Fairy Mastermind is gone, it's one of the next best things. There's Leovold. One of the next best things you can kind of be doing. Mason having both makes sense. Yeah. 
Especially it's just a little room. slow, but in this draft in particular, that's why I never did it because like the four counters. Yep. But in this draft, which is all just a little bit slower, like we, this card's also deeply good without the chorus counter thing. If you, if, flash, if, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you you loot your way your reanimator target. Right. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, for sure. It's mm-hmm. very strong. Well, if you wanted to loot your way to a reanimator target, you got to hit a player. You probably loot a real core instead of the shadow. Sure. Th- this has a pretty strong upside over that with the two power and also, yes. um, and also being able to cast things for the win. Yeah. I I, th- I think it's contextual. If there's if yes. this is a more planeswalker heavy format, then I would consider looter a core before Malcolm because of the shadow aspect yep. of it, and that it de- it does it loots when it attacks. I believe so. All I have to do is declare it, and then it does its thing. As opposed to Malcolm, which has to hit the player. So if you had a planeswalker with Malcolm, you just don't get the trigger. Yeah, is that the, that's the get or if it gets skills. blocked, yeah, there's the get lost. Yeah, so it gets two map counters. Yes, and map counters lets you explore. Yeah, yeah, no, sorcery speed only. I think correct. And they cost one mana to use. They're artifacts with one tap, sack it, target player, sorry, cre- target creature you control explores, activating only the sorcery. Yeah. So it, it grants the ability to the creature. Yeah. It's the most anemic of cards. Get lost? Or uh, tokens. No, no. Uh, uh, <coughs> map tokens feel oh, like they're yeah. like crimped in like six ways. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, adding to a 2-1 flyer right now, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's a very real thing. If only they added chorus counters. Oh, counterspell on the label. Yeah, that's a good yeah. good time to use it because mm-hmm. you don't get to use it again. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna explore. Doing our first mapping. Uh, that's a street, street wraith. wraith. Yeah. So he's gonna decide to yard or to leave it on top. Yard. And yard and get a counter. That's a plus one plus one counter. Yes. Not a course. Not, not, not a course counter. Not a course line. Holding up uh, some abrupt decay-ish mana there, just in case, you know. Yeah, notably, I mean, telegraphing it pretty hard, because you right. still have a map sitting there. Which yeah. is fine, because if he doesn't have it, it's still, like, you know... Just... Yeah, it's enough of a threat. Right. The treachery to steal the Malcolm. Pretty strong. Uh, so if you're Mason, do you abrupt decay your own Malcolm in order to... Is it decay, or is it a trophy that's in hand? Oh, does trophy only target theirs? Trophy can hit anything, like so. Like trophy could kill. No, oh, trophy has four or less, doesn't it? I'm saying can trophy Trophy's hit the treasury. Three or less. Oh no, it can't. So trophy can. Trophy can. Sorry, but it has to be a permanent they control. So you can't trophy right, your own. They can the treasury. Yeah. Yeah. Get your mouth but, but then they would get the land. Yeah. Which right. is what is going on. Nice. We had the, we had the trophy in hand, so it also allows her to untap, as opposed to yes. if you had a abrupt decay, you kill your own, right. deny her the land, and also deny her the untap. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think at this point, he wants the creature. Sure. Nalene looks like she might only have one or two cards. Yeah, in she's hand. only she's only got one or two cards. Yeah, Mason's got one card in hand, so we're we're basically playing off the top. Although Nalene does have Lutri that she can buy, and Mason effectively has four damage swinging in next turn. Yeah, mm-hmm. or more depending on what he. There's one more map token left, so. One more. Okay. Oh, it's a four. Yeah. I think there's two. I think there's three map tokens, but not right now. Yeah, get lost is pretty sweet. I don't know if this card's gonna be better or worse than the new Ox cards coming out of uh, Modern Horizons, but the Ox is a Modern, modern Ox is out now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. It's, okay. They just didn't get drafted. Nice. The one steer that, clear. Yeah, steer clear. Deal two damage to target attacking or blocking. No, no, no. no. It's like basically sorts of postures, but they get an Ox. That's on steer clear. Okay. Yeah. It's like uh, it's basically one of the ones that like. But it's from uh, the set? Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, they had the oxus and the cow. It's mono white. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll see. And Elaine has a ton of mana still untapped, so six mana untapped. It's hard to cast something into it. I think it's a common or uncommon. Yeah, it's got uncommon most likely. So let's see. Bovine Intervention. Thank there you, you Shambles. Bovine X- yeah, we just got yeah. to it. Thank you, Shambles. Shambles X Mew? Hmm. <coughs> Oh, it destroys, but doesn't exile. Okay. And it's only artifacts or creatures? Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Less good than I thought by a bunch I of mean, ways, but... Well, the flexibility makes it new, uh, pretty unique. Yes. Um, Bovine intervention. In the, yeah. okay, in this so match, he, it destroys a liability. Did, keeping the consider on top, right. but did get the counter, so he's attacking for four. It's a four-three, and click will kill it. Yep. He shows Death Shadow and a fetch. <laughs> She's going to let him keep those. So even though he's at 16 life. Yeah. So long, Malcolm. 
you did what you always do, which is get a couple chorus counters and then die before you could do anything. <laughs> you know what? He made a burn of Vendillion click. <laughs> he did. Yeah, I mean, use the entire cow on Vendillion click there. Yeah. All right, so we saw the Oko off the dig. We don't know if there was... There's the DAC. There was a DAC as yep. well. Oh, yeah, off the dig, so... DAC's going to take that mox. No, no there, what? Nah, you don't want the mox. She's digging. She needs answers. Yeah. So she went into that turn with just DAC Vaden in hand. She had, she had two cards. She had one. DAC plus one. Oh, DAC after plus she one. drew. At, yeah, after, after she drew. Yeah. So DAC and did an injury, yeah. So mm -hmm. she had DAC plus one and she played it. No, she needs to do And there's the Lutri. Right. Interesting to take the Lutri afterwards. I guess she wanted to uh, see if she got something she could cast first. So but otherwise, Lutri's a great thing to do. Did not see what the consider was, but took it. Tried to freeze. Um, pretty good. Pretty good to draw four cards there. Yeah. Get two mana. So. <laughs> Get rid of that stupid library that nobody ever wants yeah. to play. Is he getting rid of the troll? No. It's a pure name. No, no, no. The black card. I think he ditched the troll. Yeah, that means reanimation package is gone. Yeah, it's a, it was gone after game one. Yeah, yeah. we saw we saw him look through his whole deck. And, um, okay, thought seas land land. Oi, underground sea or sorry, uh, overground tomb island and thought seas puts them closer to death tower though. It does, but and so does the overground tomb. And you know it's going to hit too because there's a loot tree there. Yeah, <laughs> divert pretty could have been very spicy. Mm hmm. But he has too much mana. So now we go no to 12 and we play the Death Shadow. It's a mighty 1-1. One, one. He's got a fetch. Oh, he already played the land. So. Yep, and next turn it'll be a 2-2 two, two, because right. I do not think we have any more shocks left in the list. And Elaine has no pressure, so we're good. Uh, Godless Shrine is out there. Breeding Pool is out there. Hollowed Fountain is out there. Overgrown Tomb is out there. Watery Grave is out there. She's right? on. Uh, I don't see a Watery Grave yet. Dude. Okay. It could have been milled, but there's no water grave yet. Okay. Oh, that's an island underneath the jet, so then, yep, we can minus three next turn and have a 4-4. Four, four. Which isn't enough to kill the jack, though. No. Nope. No, it looks like the divert. Divert got tossed. And it's, something else. Yeah. Uh, it's not, I bet it's not the Lutri, though. The Lutri's gone. Lutri got, um... The Thought Seas? Thought Seas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, that's interesting. To see the Shaman. Does that affect anything, really? I mean, it eats no. away, gains a little life, potentially. Yeah. All right, so Mason just drew, I believe it's Tef, Hero of Dominaria. That's a great draw. Yeah. So we're going to swing it back just to stop her from digging. And leaving that open. She doesn't block, so he gets to crack it and hit for uh, hit for three. Mm -hmm. Four. Four, I'm oh, sorry. I think we're kind of hoping now that the... Oh, we know the Tef will resolve, right? Most likely, I think there's one unknown card. She, yeah, she has one unknown off of the latest deck activation. Okay. Yeah. And that is... Oh, Cycling Rod and Triumph. Huh. Nice. So, so we have one unknown card. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Okay, but it resolved. Yep. yep. Oh, it's a Snapcaster, I believe. Oh, he might be turning the corner here. Yeah. Although I said that before. Mason has the opportunity to... Snap turns the corner here. Yeah. Because well, he gets on tap two lands. He doesn't have enough mana, though. Oh, oh, he gets on tap the mana. And he's got a abrupt decay. Okay. Well, he, he already untapped the lens. Oh, so yeah, it's two okay. plus the right. consider, basically, okay. uh, if that's still in the yard. Now, DRS makes the snap a little worse, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cat and mouse game starts now. Yeah. Starts meow. <laughs> starts right meow. Well, we can ba we can talk the the DRS. True. Or abrupt sure. decay it or whatever's left in the graveyard, right? Yeah, because it's not. Well, also, like, she's probably going to use it. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's the other thing is that, like, yeah, but I, it, we have a five turn clock. She knows he has snap. She knows he has, you know, stuff. So I think she has way to use it. Well, well she, she doesn't know she has it in his deck. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're not going to, I mean, it's not like you're going to literally hold it for all time. Right. I think you still hold it to your turn and do it as a speed. Sure. Yeah, yeah, agreed. But you do it in response after she does it. Exactly. Well, four mana. It, it forces yeah. the cat and mouse game, and, for, and she wants to use it anyway. Oh, yeah, she's just attacking? One. Yeah. Yep. She tapped four mana. I, this is a Wrath. That makes sense. Yep, Supreme Verdict. Okay. She did bring in the, the third card of the board, then. Mm -hmm. And a Ledger Shredder. Okay. Uh, we we can answer that one pretty yeah, easily. Was... Yep, we got the Snap in hand already. Mm-hmm. Or you just tucked the Ledger Shredder. You know, I didn't know who I was rooting for this at the start of this match, and at this point, I still don't know who I'm rooting for, but I'm really happy these games are really good. Yeah, I think that's all you root for is a good game of Magic. Well, normally I, loot, I root for Elaine losing and for Mason losing. <laughs> no, but this is like a fun... That's for, fun mag for yeah. Magic winning. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay. We time walk. Yep, and we have Vindicate and I think three lands in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is wrapped up at this point. Like, uh, I mean, maybe. She, she has, I mean, he's got she a has trick, draws. Kill Dak Faden, and then we're going to move. Oh, that was the Time Walk turn. Okay. <coughs> Very quick Time Walk. Okay, I, I, yeah, I thought, I thought he still had a turn after that. Sure, so. yeah. No, but yeah, Teferi's low in loyalty. Although she's, she's drawing dead for right. two turns in a row now. Yep. So, yeah. We're he's back got, to this again. <laughs> she's asking for library. Elena's a, she's got a six turn clock in front of her, so Mason can't. Be drawn too much. He's got a spell quarter in hand now. And effectively, he has to draw a return because he has to draw two return off the Teferi. Yep. If he could choose to have a Narset and play at one right now, he might do it. Probably not. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what an awkward liability. Yes. For Elaine. <laughs> I okay? Yeah, might as well might check. Have, yeah. And mana drain on the Inquisition. Oh, man. That's not a sign of strength. Yeah. That's a sign of, I have a basic land, and I might right. as well use this one. Yep. Ooh, plusing. Oh, JVP. No, no. No. We can't flash back Time Walk. <laughs> time Walk is gone. Lighter Shredder's back. Yeah. Which we can tuck again. No, or just Spell Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. Nah, yeah, now we've... Oh. Teferi does draw a lot of cards. Okay. Cards are a good way of winning the game. For sure, for sure. Now, is this a globetrot moment where we also turn JVP sideways and we say, no, attack? <laughs> <laughs> I think that Mason's too classy for that move. Okay. And that's yeah, the first course. time I've ever said Mason's classy. All right, so that's it. Next turn. And Mason's still at 19, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with three cards left. Four. Oh, no, sorry. He's at, he's at a nine. Cycle Miscalc. Look for the next Wrath, I guess. That's it. Uh, Mason picked it up. Wow. Good job. Whoa. That all was right. a great, great play match all around. Brandon's going to move over as soon as this match is In the words of the immortal JR, that was a slobber knocker. <laughs> <laughs> sure was.